Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great weekend. If you are brand new to the channel, kind of a little routine, we'd really, really appreciate uh, the likes, the share, the subscription, all that good stuff that helps this channel grow and helps us with a non-stop audience of good technical analysis. And that's the name of the game. It's all about uh, the price action that we have, not the price action uh, that we want. So let's talk about it, right? The question coming into uh, today's session was, can the bulls finally follow through, right? Uh, we've been seeing nonstop uh, top of the range action, followed by disappointment and followed by three, four days of drift, only to come back strong on one channel to engulf three, four days worth of selling. And the question going into today's trading session was, can we finally start building over the previous day's channel. And it, it did look really somber in, in the first like half hour, 40 minutes. You're like, oh, here we go again. The market is softening. The leaders that broke out on Friday, they're softening. Well, let's see if they can kind of, you know, let's see if they could get their feet under them and maybe, you know, put up a fight a little bit later. And not only did they put up a fight, they advanced. So we'll get to that in a second. So there's some key takeaways uh, from the trading session. Every day I try to kind of take a step back and look at, at the positives, the negatives on the macro scale so I can determine, uh, you know, not only what the charts are telling me, but I could you kind of get a pretty good view of sentiment. Here's my key takeaway. So if you guys remember, uh, every single time there's been a headline, a negative headline surrounding the banks and grant, these are really, really aggressive headlines, whether it's uh, SIVB, uh, FRC, Pat W, whatever the case may be, right? The market usually is gets uh, jittered, right? And they start hitting stocks, shooting first, ask questions later. We saw a lot of weakness this morning in the banks, okay? Notably, uh, the same names have been taken down. And the difference between what we saw today and the little bit of jitters that we saw, technology did not follow, okay? They did not submit to uh, the fears for a potential next round of uh, bank failures, and they fought. And not only they fought against, they advanced price action. A lot of names advanced price action from the previous day. That's number one, okay? Uh, second thing that I really, really liked what I saw today was after, you know, three days last week of really tight ranges, and we had that really fantastic expansion there where a lot of stocks broke out on Friday. The question is not only can we advance, but can we have an expansion day today, right? So we got that as well, right? You saw a lot of names doing incredibly well today. Uh, AMD went nuts. NVIDIA went nuts. Netflix went nuts. The Qs, uh, Qs again, got above yesterday's range, right? Meta finally woke up. We talked about Meta, finally woke up. Just maybe one day away from reclaiming the five-day moving average. Uh, Apple, okay, after a really, really great earnings run, it broke out on earnings run, it put in an inside day down seven cents on a day. That's bullish, that's a rest, that's exactly what you wanna see. The only one that I didn't like what I saw today was Microsoft. But here's the flip side of this, right? So Microsoft at one point got hit and still put in an inside day from Friday, but here's kind of what I, again, the, the positives. We always try to use the positives versus the negatives and get an opinion for the next day. Even when Microsoft was at its lowest point of the day, right? When it was selling off at the lows of the day, all these other stocks were disconnected from Microsoft and things were appreciating from Friday's channel. So there's a lot of good things uh, that I'm definitely seeing. Another good thing, another sign, again, a very bullish sign, uh, there was reports in the middle of the day that TD, if you guys remember TD and uh, FRC, right? Or TD, was it FRC? Yeah, it was FRC. TD and FRC, uh, they they broke, right? They broke apart. They broke about their union. And if, you, this, was a, and if this was a discussion about, about a week ago, everything would have been absolutely destroyed. So the market dipped on that initial news on the TD news. If you look at the QQQs, uh, right around two o'clock, right? You can see is right around two o'clock, they had a nice dip here, right? Really nice dip here. And the good part about it is they brought it right back up. So 
it, it, a lot of bullish action. Really, is a lot of bullish action now that we're getting towards the eighth and ninth inning of uh, earnings season. It's going to be very interesting to see. Well, where where does the bear case lie after this? Now, again, I'm not naive. I think we we all speak uh, the same language. I, I understand that the market doesn't need a reason. Uh, to go down 500 handles, we get it. But also the market, also I have to understand the market doesn't need a reason to go higher as well. And again, with all the inflation talk and this, that, and third and interest rates, uh, again, we have, a, we have a CPI number coming out on Wednesday. Uh, is it possible tomorrow we get a continuation of today's session? It would be nice. It would be absolutely nice. And that would be a continuation from Friday's session that would give us three days in a row of expansion channels. It would be lovely. But I could definitely see a scenario tomorrow that, hey, you know what? Let's wait and see. If you guys remember last Tuesday going into Wednesday, we had the two-day Fed meeting and the market decided to rest, right? Decided to rest uh, about a day and a half until we got uh, the Fed announcement. You know, is it possible we get a res day tomorrow? Okay, that's cool. But the one lesson that we've learned and we, we, we keep on reiterating, especially in the live webinar, is the day that the market rests, you rest with it, okay? Don't try to look for trades. Again, like today, Friday, the trades were obvious. Once they, you know, once they confirmed those channels, there wasn't, any, you know, there wasn't any hesitation. These stocks were just exploding through those levels. So it's important to understand that the market is just open to facilitate buyers and sellers. The market's not open. It's not out to get you. It doesn't owe you anything. It's not, you're not entitled to squat. Okay. The market's open from from uh, four o'clock in the morning when the ECNs open to eight o'clock at night when the ECNs close, and that is it. It's there to facilitate. When the market decides to rest digest information or even digest the recent move which we had an incredible move here uh on the queues from 316 to 323 in about a, you know a session and a half there, there is a possible pregnant pause tomorrow ahead of the cpi so that's possible the great thing about a potential rest day the stocks that are coming back out of their ranges if they confirm all the attention and the money flow will be on them so for example meta right meta had a great great quarter or at least on the surface, right? Meta had a great quarter. It's come in now five days in a row. As you can see here, once again, it got rejected here on the orange line, which is the five-day moving average, the same place where it got rejected three days ago. So this is one to watch, okay? This is definitely one to watch. If they can reclaim, again, if we could just break this downtrend, and if Meta can reclaim the five-day moving average, this thing could wake up very, very aggressively. Something to keep an eye on. Apple, you know, is it possible it rests one more day? Okay, that's cool. Uh, Apple, again, needs to be bought on dips, like we talked about on the weekend video. Again, the gift was the, you know, the move to the, right down to the rising support. They trapped the rising support. It went up and down today 68 times within a 10 cent range. But the more important part is it's digesting Friday's gains. Maybe it's tomorrow, wake up. Maybe the next day will wake up. But the point is something like this uh, definitely needs to be bought uh, on every dip at the rising support. Look at Netflix for tomorrow, right? Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. Look at Netflix, finally broke this downtrend today. This is the highest close in this whole formation. If it could just confirm this whole channel here, maybe Netflix wakes up. Look how tight Amazon is getting, right? Look, look, look at this Amazon, right? Towards the end of the day, we started seeing 106 weeklies, 107 weeklies, 109 weeklies. This thing is now rejected three times off the same level. If this thing can just start waking up here, who knows, maybe towards the middle or towards the end of the week, this thing starts running again. So there's a lot of names. And, and the wonderful thing about it is you really don't need to be, uh, you really don't need to be super creative. If you go through the NASDAQ 100, and I probably trade 95% of all my trades are going to be NASDAQ 100 names, uh, especially the same 10, you're going to find some really good value. Guys, look at a name like Spotify. Right. I mean, again, look how much value we have on the table. Look at Spotify. Spotify. Spotify had a monster, monster quarter. It came in, consolidated for like two weeks. Look how close this thing is to taking out earnings highs. If this thing gets above earnings highs, maybe this thing wakes up as well. And a name like IMGN, uh, a smaller price name, right? It had a good, good PR, and now it's just consolidating. The longer the sideways action continues the higher probability will be. And if it can start attacking the top of the channel, you could get your next leg up. So we got a lot of good value on deck for tomorrow. The question is, are we going to have another expansion cycle like we've had the last two days or the market's going to rest? A nice do, uh, do favorable rest that it deserves. And is it going to continue back on Wednesday? That is to be determined. So let's talk about uh, some pivots 
uh, for today. Again, the ones that went really, really went. The ones that didn't kind of sat there, which was fine. Again, so here was the pivot on Friday on Apple. Uh, 71, uh, 71, 7150 needs to build. Apple went all the way up to the 104.30 level. Didn't quite make it there, but it's still resting, which is great. Uh, NVIDIA had an explosion on Friday, right? Explosion on Friday, 279. Uh, here is the next pivot here, 287.55, needs to confirm, you know, NVIDIA went nuts again, absolutely, day two, uh, and close of the highest form, this formation traded as high as uh, 92 and change, uh, WW that we discussed on the weekend update, 950 rejected twice on daily, uh, needs to build, here was WW, right, here was WW, took out the 950, uh, traded up to 1002 before it reversed, uh, Amazon got rejected again off the 106 level. Tesla never made it up uh, to the 74 level. Uh, and that is it. So the most important part going into uh, tomorrow's session is really understanding where we are in the cycle. Again, big run from 16 to 23 on the queues in two sessions. So again, is a possible rest uh, necessary? Yeah, it might. But does it mean that the whole market needs to rest? Probably not. So if we could get an outflow in some names that had big, big moves and some names that possibly are coming back to the channel, that could be really, really advantageous. Oh, guys, one more. Keep an eye on Shopify, right? So Shopify has had this three-day monster, monster run, right? Uh, again, this is a big move. Uh, stock has gone from basically uh, 46 to 64. Look, by no means am I calling this the top. But watch this thing the next day or two. If it could gap up and put in an inverted hammer and go red in the day, there's a chance we get a you know one or two day back test. I'm saying maybe just one day, just as, as super duper strong, just to take advantage of gravity. And if we can get a blow off top going green to red, all we need to do is use the high of the day as out. And if it starts back testing, who knows? Maybe we get a back test into this rising support here on the upper Bollinger Band. Just something to watch. Uh, again, for all you guys who are interested in pivots, uh, I'll be more than happy uh, to open up your world to the wonderful world of pivots. Uh, they are very, very cool, very specific in nature, very uh, patient-oriented, but it's something that I think that if you are finally exposed to, I, I think is something that you really, really like. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.